In this video, I'm gonna replace the battery on this iPhone 12 mini. Now, I am gonna be using an aftermarket battery for this one. However, with this particular battery that I'm going to use, it should act and behave like a genuine battery. This is the Amp Centrix Plus battery from Mobile Centrix. And although this is the first time that I'm using it, my guess is that it has an original Apple BMS that's been programmed to be 100%. So when we install this BMS with the Amp Centric cell, bear in mind, we know that Amp Centric cells are very good. It should allow us to recalibrate it and act like a used battery, I believe. So that's the theory. We'll start by powering it off and we'll see what happens when we install it. Like most battery replacements, we'll start by removing the two screws at the bottom of the phone. Obviously on the 14, well, I think we, we do it on all. I was gonna say remove the screen, but we don't remove the screen on all models. Once we've got those two screws out of the way, I'm gonna attach the suction cup down at the bottom third. And when I can find one, we'll use a little woodpecker. We will use a woodpecker razor blade, single-sided razor blade. And we're going to insert it flat. I don't know if I caught that. Let's do it again. I'm going to insert it flat like this down into the edge of the screen and the midframe. Then I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. This is not squirting out very good look. So it's just a little bit. And what I'm doing at this point, I'm going to lift up with the suction cup and then pry back with the woodpecker with the razor blade and what we should find is that it will compromise the seal popping the screen off sometimes it takes a bit more force than other times especially on a cold day oh, i've snapped my razor blade that's the first time that i've ever done that but it's also a brand new a new type of razor blade that i'm using so that's interesting so i'm sorry I'll carry on using this one because the other part of the razor blade stayed in the in the device. But that's the first time I've ever snapped one of these thicker razor blades. This might ruin our chances of getting in it that way. Very interesting to see that I've just done that. I'm shocked. Right, I'm going to go in from the side this time. But bloody hell, this is stuck down very well, this screen on this one. Because this, this method of removing screens using the razor blade, no heat method, I call it. The no, no cooking, no heat method has been pretty much foolproof up to now. Right, we're in from the side here. Now that we're in that, that little gap there, this is the point where we insert the razor blade take uh, sorry insert the plastic pick take out the razor blade and then we're going to run it up that edge lift in with the suction cup still and i'm going to be careful around here because there's probably a bit of razor blade still stuck in there i'll add some more alcohol underneath maybe it was the fact that the alcohol wasn't coming out too good but it just seems to be stuck so well Right, we've worked our way around. We've got the screen off. We just need to give it a little wiggle. I didn't expect removing the screen to be the difficult part of this video, but there we go. Let's just get some tweezers and remove the broken bit of razor blade, which is that bit there. Oops. I'm gonna add some isopropyl around the battery, top, bottom, and this side. These tend to come out very, very easily, these iPhone 12 mini batteries are. Now I will use a dry wing screwdriver to remove that screw and then carefully lift up, slide out and remove the shield. Always, always use a plastic tool to disconnect the battery and then disconnect the screen. Don't be tempted yet to pull it on that screen because there is this guy just here. So we'll have to use the tri-wing screwdriver to remove the five small tri-wing screws that are holding down this other Tetris-shaped 
shield. I think you'll know exactly which shape I mean on Tetris when I say that, won't you? Maybe we'll get Alex to put a little animation of that Tetris shape. Do you know what I mean? So disconnect this cable. And now that that's been disconnected, we can remove the screen, put it to one side, and that should have left us enough time to get underneath this battery with our prying tool and just pop this battery out. So that alcohol will have soaked under the battery. You can see where it's got to. And it's done what we wanted it to do. Before I started this video, I did make sure that the software is up to date on this one. So when it comes to it, what I was saying was, we should be able to recalibrate it. Sometimes, when these have been soaked in alcohol, it makes it difficult to remove those battery tabs. So I'll just use the number 17 blade to help it along, let's say that. Help that along, help that along. And we've got one more bit to remove. Getting that out. And there we go. We'll add another couple of little drops of alcohol there, there, there. Or we'll just clean up. Make sure that it's a nice clean surface for our new battery to stick to. So typically, when you replace a battery with one of these Amcentrix, let's cover that bit up, Amcentrix batteries, not the plus battery, just the regular Amcentrix basic or pro. So that's these ones, or it'll be blue if it's the basics one. But the, these batteries will flag up with a non-genuine part warning. So it comes up in settings saying that this is not a genuine part and it won't allow you to recalibrate it. However, when we install this one, it will bypass that problem. Maybe I'll take one of these apart and we'll figure out why it bypasses it or how it bypasses it. But for this one, I'm not going to. It comes with, as usual, the adhesive pre-installed, which is always nice. It saves you a job and it means you can just peel it back and plug it in. Always plug it in first number one rule plug it in then lay it into the home that it needs to go into make sure it sits nice and flat and then you can disconnect it after that the reason you do that is because it's easier to move this around than it is to move this around so you could place that in and then mess around reconnecting that or you could connect that and then put that in does that make sense probably not I'm not going to mess around with the adhesive on this one. I've got another video that I'll link just up here that shows you how to replace the battery, including the adhesive. But for the sake and speed of this video, it's designed to showcase this battery, not exactly how to do it. I'll link the video on how to do it fully in the description. Uh, not in the description, at this point here. Maybe we'll put it in the description as well, but we'll put it up here, look. Click it if you want to watch it. So all I'm going to do, if you were doing this in full, obviously you'd replace the seal and then you would reconnect the battery. I have a little battle plugging it in like I'm having. And then you put the shield on, shield on, screw it all up. But for the sake of movement and speed, we are just going to turn this on. Now, hopefully, this will come with a bit more charge on it than a regular Apple battery does because it drives me crazy that they ship with like 0%, less than 5%. And it looks like it's got some charging. I have plugged it in anyway. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we've definitely got some juice in it. 64% worth of juice. It's charging. It's showing battery percentage in the top. It should pop up with that unable to verify notification in a second. Sometimes you have to wait a little moment. There we go. Unable to verify this phone has a genuine Apple battery. Details from this battery may not be accurate, but it does say it's 100%. It's not giving us the option, it is here, but it wasn't giving the option in battery health to finish the repair. I can't remember if it normally does. I'm sure it does. But let's click finish your battery repair and we'll do this. Just as a little side note, 
on M360, it did come up as battery being replaced straight away as well and non-original, whereas all the other parts you can see are original. Let's do restart and finish repair though. Oh, come on, it doesn't need a software update. So we'll turn it off and we'll force it into diagnostic mode with the up and down volume, then plugging it in. Go into diagnostic mode, baby. There we go. Now that we're in diagnostics and repair mode, we will reconnect to our local Wi-Fi network. finish repair and then hopefully this is the point where it recognizes that the battery is new but it's a original genuine battery this is a genuine apple pot it's an absolute miracle it's not though is it but it's very good that it does that it's pretty damn handy that there is an affordable sort of cheap mode option available what that leaves you with though is a problem of honesty and trust now if i tell somebody i'm putting a genuine battery in that's exactly what they're getting but i know for a fact that there will be companies out there that will not tell the truth it's done magic restart the phone let's see what happens this time so if we open settings battery battery health and charging now we should get 100% genuine I don't know if it shows I don't think this I can't remember if the 12 shows that it's been swapped or not or if it gives it a, a used or new or genuine status let's have a look so it, it looks like normal which is great but then if we go general about parts and service battery used there we go so we have got a used battery in there which we sort of expected but yeah that's that means that that works which is great we'll put that to one side let's see if what i said was true i've got another battery here for a 12 slash 12 pro i'll pick the 12 series because it's probably the most popular battery replacement that we do but what i wanted to do with this one was find out what it looks like inside so let's get that out of the way let's peel this off and we're going to just deconstruct this i do not recommend deconstructing batteries at home but for the sake of science and experimentation we will open this one up so i'm using plastic insulated tools man um i will just peel this back i'm not sure if it is you know what i thought it were my thinking was that it was a used bms so a non-original apple bms but it's gotta be something well how does it trick it oh maybe there's something look there's like a little tag on attached look let me zoom in. So this little part here, this tag on sort of flex 12 Pro Max, 12 PM, whatever. This is a 12 battery. It's attached onto the, um, onto the battery. So this chip here is like the EEPROM, battery EEPROM, I guess. And it's attached. Just trying to figure out where it's attached. Ah, it's attached on these four little solder beads there so they attach onto it then you've got this what's attached onto it soldered on and i guess that's what defines it uh i don't know so that's the 12 flex so 12 and 12 pro flex i know it's upside down that attaches onto this sort of little board here and then i guess that this little tag on is attached is manufactured elsewhere and then soldered onto it and then you've got a Amcentrix Plus cell which I, I'll get in touch with the guys from um, uh, from Mobile Centrix and I will find out what cell this is if it's a new cell or if it's the same cell as the Pro or if it's the same cell as the Basic 
and we'll find out exactly which which cell it is that it uses and yeah that's how it looks when you take it apart so you don't have to so that was the battery taken apart which was quite interesting we got that little tag on flex we did the repair there's a sort of moral question to it as well because obviously companies could do this using one of those batteries and advertise it as a genuine service there is the part what says used which is gonna uh, gonna trip people up i don't know whether we've used these for real resale devices i feel like there's a dishonesty sort of part there for, for me personally but i can see how it would be beneficial for other companies to use those things it's also got me questioning i bought some of these the other week as well which is a similar sort of battery now it's advertised as a genuine used battery but i'm wondering is it possibly a fake battery with a one of those BMSs attached. I'm gonna to have to open one of those in a separate video and find out. Maybe we'll do a little comparison video of different grades of batteries. I'm brainstorming it while I'm talking. Different grades of batteries, new, used, genuine, uh, Amcentrix, Amcentrix Plus. We'll compare them all and see what they look like inside. Let's take some battery to pipe. Anyway, I'm rambling, talking rubbish. Thank you for watching that one and I'll see you in the next video.